This this is it. Is fall in Colorado, baby. <laughs> Hey guys, hey. we are here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Oh my gosh, you guys, it is gorgeous here. So we stayed last night at the Bass Pro Shops in uh, Colorado Springs, and that was in last week's episode. This morning, uh, we went over to our RV park. It's called Pikes Peak RV Park, got all settled in there. This was the only park left in town that had any vacancy oh that would gosh. fit us. We got so lucky. We, we got needed, really lucky. Yeah, we needed a three night stay and that that's what they had, so. Yeah, it's been a while since we've been on the road so we kind of forgot that we need to schedule that out a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, it's early October, the aspens are changing. We really should have realized that this would be a popular place. But yeah. in any case, it all worked out. And um, after finishing out the work day, we have come to Garden of the Gods. We might catch a good sunset and do just a little hiking here. And then um, we found a brewery in town that serves gluten-free beers. I have found that I've got an intolerance to gluten, which is very sad. But there's lots of gluten-free options on the market, so um, I have adapted pretty well. And so, yeah, there's gluten-free beers in town, so that's exciting. Craft gluten-free beers. Right, yeah, yeah. We found, you know, out-of-state in bottles, but, um, yeah, this is made right here. So, our first gluten-free brewery. Check it out. <laughs> Next up? Potterville. Potterville. We're at like the Central Garden parking lot. Um, it looks so much like arches. It does. It looks like the same exact type of rock, red rock. I'd be very surprised if there aren't a bunch of arches out there. But right now we're in front of this giant wall of red rock. I don't know what this is called. We'll have to figure it out and put it there. That's right. I guess we'll go find a path and see if we can get a little closer. I, you know, yeah, this feels so much like the Devil's uh, devil's Garden. Well, that makes sense. It's also a garden. There you go. So, <laughs> but that was Devil's Garden. This is Garden of the Gods. This is the counterpoint. <laughs> We're just saying how this is the perfect way to get back into traveling after being... Stationary for so long. Stationary and in the Midwest where it's rolling hills but basically flat. This is like... So dramatic. Like if we had come here on the heels of being at a place like Arches, I don't know that it would hit us as hard as it is. Yeah, that's true. We've been um, away from these uh, majestic outcroppings for so long. Yeah. So I was wondering, and out loud earlier to Maggie, I was wondering how a place as nice as this could be free. We didn't pay anything to bring the car in here. And this plaque right here explains it. Apparently the owner of the land, in his dying wish, he said he wanted it to always be free to come here. Free to the public forever. Yeah, very cool. This place is gorgeous. So the original owner of the land who we were just talking about, um, Charles Elliott Perkins, bought the land for $22 an acre. Oh my gosh. So when Perkins' children gave the land to the city, um, they followed his four wishes. Um, that the park shall forever be free and open to the public. The park be known forever as Garden of the Gods. No buildings be erected except those necessary to maintain the park, and no intoxicating liquors be manufactured or sold in the park. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How interesting. Yeah. 
Garden of the Gods was given special recognition as a national natural landmark in 1972. So um, the gluten-free IPA is called Millitology because it's made with millet, which is a gluten-free grain. Oh, I'm excited. Green Crusher is an IBA, which I think is a uh, India Black Ale. All right, guys, so we happen to be here during peak fall color, and so we are going to take a drive over to Cripple Creek. Going to go do some leaf peeping. That's what they call it, apparently. Apparently leaf peeping. But let's see, so we've got our camera gear. We've got our dog gear. We've got uh, food. Coffee. Coffee. Water. Coats. Hats. Money. Dogs. Dog bed. <laughs> <laughs> we we've, we've come very prepared for all this. We're prepared. All these. It's things. chilly out there. It's like in the upper 40s today. So. Oh yeah, and yeah. it's going to be even chillier as we're going over the pass. And yeah, I think we're going up about 3,000 feet in elevation, and Manitou Springs is about 6,500 feet. So, anyway, should be a great day. This is it. It's fall in Colorado, baby. <laughs> we did it. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. 
Well guys, we made it to Cripple Creek. We saw lots of colors on the way here and can't wait to look at them all on the way back too. Yeah, so this town is tiny, but it's adorable. Yeah, and Little casinos um, everywhere. Yeah, I think about every other business in town says it's a casino, so that's crazy. This was a real big mining town. Um, there's different mining tours you can go on. There's a jail museum, little coffee houses, just a ton of charm. Lots of charm. Um, so I don't know if we'll spend too much time here, but um, I'm glad we came. Me too. Well, our time in Manitou Springs came to an end. There's so much that we would have loved to have done, but yeah, we it just ran out of time. We made it a shorter stay because the weather is really starting to get cold and uh, we have a little more we still want to do in Colorado. So some of the things that we wish we could have done is drive up to Pikes Peak. Yeah, so um, I think it takes about an hour to get to the top and there's an entrance fee. I feel like it's maybe around $15 a person, but you can find out on their website. And the day that we were going to do it, it was really cloudy and so it just wasn't a great option because you would have gotten up there and looked down at clouds, which mm -hmm. is still pretty, but not really what we were going for. Um, there's also a hike that is pretty well known called the Manitou Incline, and it's this really fierce um, 2,000 foot elevation gain over one mile, and it stairs all the way to the top. A lot of people use it as training, um, and then you can do four miles of switchbacks to get back down. Um, we decided we were not really quite ready for that after being somewhat sedentary in Iowa <laughs> these last um, couple months. So, And Brad's got a little bit of a, a bum ankle. Yeah, I'm still recovering from a sprained ankle from the night of the football game. There's also this Wind Cave Park area and they had cave tours and zip lines and all kinds of stuff going on. That sounded really fun. There was a castle just up the street I would have liked to check out. Bishop Castle? I don't know. The one that I was talking about? I think it's a different one. Oh. It was like a mile away. Oh, cool. Yeah. I didn't know about that one. <laughs> Bishop Castle is quite a bit south of there. Single guy building this castle is taking him 60 years. He's still got construction on it, but it's open for free tours, uh, self-guided tours. So I thought that sounded cool, but we didn't get to do it this time. Oh, there was the Red Rock Canyon area that looked really cool to explore Open and hike spaces. in. There was this seven waterfalls um, hiking area. Yeah, so much to do there. And I, I, uh, I wanted to do this Red Mountain hike, which was just 2.5 miles and didn't get a chance to do that either. We just thought that Manitou Springs was just a really charming town. Yeah, so it'll, it'll be on our list again for warmer weather. But um, it's getting about time to get on the road. We got to make our next destination today yet. So we will see you there. See you down the road. <laughs>